You are excited about AI, but you have zero experience. You want to build real things, get involved, contribute to open source. But every time you open one of these AI library code base, you feel absolutely lost. Unlike a normal software project, AI library can feel weirdly abstract. The code usually doesn't directly do anything visual. It usually supports the AI process that then do interesting things, which make it hard to know what's going on. If that sounds like you, good, because today I'm going to show you how to get involved the right way. Using the popular reinforcement learning library Pufferlib with insight from one of its contributors, Dan Advantage, who started with zero knowledge about AI just like you. Pufferlib is an open source toolkit for reinforcement learning focusing on extreme simulation performance and broad environment compatibility. It wraps and vectorizes diverse RL environment so that existing RL algorithm can be used out of the box. If none of what I just said made any sense to you, but you are excited nonetheless, great. Keep on watching. Before that, if you are an early beginner and want to build practical AI skills for your career, I highly recommend the Scrimba Learning Platform, which is kindly sponsoring this video. The platform UI make it super easy to actually work on the right coding skills to get you to build things that will actually be used by real users. I strongly believe that understanding how these AI systems work and using them effectively go hand in hand. One of the courses that I kind of kind of always recommend for beginner is this full stack developer pad, which is like a hundred hours. So it takes you from literally no knowledge to having deployed a system. They even recently released a full course on backend development, which is a very useful skill to have if you are productionalizing AI systems. Things like basic architecturing skills over there, setting up and managing databases, and stuff like deploying these backend systems. So check out the link in the description for 20% off and to check out their massive library of free content. Let's start with the first and most important lesson which is that you should generally not contribute to AI library to pad your resume. The purpose of trying to make contribution to AI libraries should be to learn. Most beginner approach open source contribution to these library with the mindset that if I contribute enough stuff, I'll look impressive, which is kind of true. But with AI open source project, this almost never works. The reason for that is that before you can contribute anything meaningful, there's just too much to understand. Unlike let's say a web dev library, AI ones usually sit on top of layer of theory, models, algorithm, environment, logic, research that change quickly, and each abstraction hide another one. So if you rush to add a feature, an environment or something, before understanding the fundamentals, the maintainer won't think, oh wow, a proactive contributor. They'll just think that they have to do so much work to review your PR. And by the way, no disrespect to web dev library, the correct mindset to have instead is to use contribution as a structured way to master a specific topic. If you contribute, great. If not, you still learn something extremely valuable. With that nice mindset in your back pocket, you can now sneakily use open source library as a compass for what to learn. Usually, the popularity of a library is somewhat correlated with the level of excitement about a specific application of AI. So, browse a few, read their documentation, look at the issues, watch discussion on their Discord, see which project click with your curiosity. Don't stress too much if multiple things interest you. AI skills transfer really well across domains. RL, LMs, vision, audio, it all interconnect in some level. But once you pick a library that interests you from a specific subfield of AI, like RL for instance, commit to learn about the subfield in depth. So if we're taking our Pufflib library as an example, and RL as a topic, you should really start by reading the main RL textbook like reinforcement learning and introduction by Sutton. Then you can go maybe through the tutorial of the founder of the library, Joseph, on X about how to use that library. You can even go back to older uh, library tutorial like gym or gymnasium to understand why this library contribute to the field in the first place. This combination of theory plus practical library usage generally accelerate your learning. Check out also the discussion ongoing by the community discord periodically as you learn about the field and start to see if week by week you understand a bit more the discussion that are going on. By setting yourself up like this, you basically anchor your learning straight into a broader community, which for some AI project is a great way to find peers and get useful information. Just make sure you pick a community that is welcoming for beginner and not toxic. Once you have the basics settled down, you then need to become a power user of the library. Many beginners believe they can provide meaningful contribution with like a surface level understanding of the library. I'm going to give it to you code. You can't. You have to put in the work 
to understand this library. There is like a threshold when things finally start to make some sense and you understand the shape of the library enough to know why it exists in the first place and why it's built the way it is. It only happens after you built something actually useful with the library. If we take pop4lib as an example, the best way to reach this threshold is simple. You just build your own crappy, janky environment. One of Dan's earliest experiments is actually creating an RL environment where the agent learned to play an Atari game called Enduro, which was a bit complicated, but helped him understand the library in depth. Fast forward to like now, November 2025, he made an environment to train an RL agent to play Diablo, which is actually pretty impressive and honestly that's kind of the whole formula whether you end up contributing or not is kind of secondary by the time you feel competent enough to make like a pr you've already gained the real reward which is like a deep competence in the subject so now you're going to hear directly from dan who is a fantastic example of going from zero to actually having very solid practical ai chops as a contributor of puffalip this interview, by the way, is part of a longer conversation I had with Dan and Joseph from Buffalib that I need to finish edit before <laughs> the end of the year. But I wanted to dedicate like this section specifically to Dan as a story because I find it like a very um, inspirational for people with no experience. Enjoy. I'm Dan. I uh, have zero experience in reinforcement learning effectively, Re zero experience in using computers to do things like science and research. Uh, I have zero programming experience. I am a pharmacist. No, I don't use computers. Yeah, I mean I do, but they're you know they're not they're not tool the tools they they ought to be. Uh, I've always been captivated by the possibilities. I really first started programming and and stopped programming also on the TI eighty three calculator during the rides into uh, the private school that I went to like for middle school uh, you know it was like forty five minute drive each way so uh, after I talked my parents into getting me the calculator you know I'd make little uh, kitty script scripts and uh, mostly like I achieved like pick a number programs yeah uh, that's it and 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 then then I stopped and for some reason I never got back into doing things on the computer. I, had, I have a Learn Visual Basic in 24 Hours book that I opened like once. Like, I don't know why I chose Visual Basic. I didn't know, like, I had no idea. I saw Peter Witten's viral YouTube video. The uh, video is AI plays Pokemon, uh, something to that effect. And uh, it's really well produced. It's extremely well produced what Peter had uh, put together for the entire project that he'd been working on on it. And it took him like more than four years of, of working, working on it. Uh, keep in mind, uh, reinforcement learning, it's sort of esoteric. It's not really a, uh, it's not really like a well-known, well-established field in playing long, uh, long form problem games like Pokemon. So, you know, it's, uh, you're emulating the Game Boy and then you're, you're, you're giving it like pixels and some, state data and, and you're just uh you're letting it go pick actions you know press the game board keys effectively and uh this is a hard problem he wanted to solve it very purely as well he wanted it to 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 really not give it much for reward sort of just let it go and explore and hopefully learn and it it really did actually you know there were some there were some engineering issues and i think that's what one of the things that took him a long time and i pulled the repo after I figure out how to use Linux, like literally, I you know I'm like, okay, how do I do it? Okay, install WSL because I've got a Windows computer. Right, great, uh, WSL is going, and you know, plod through it. Eventually, I get the repo pulled, and I start to run it. And you know, it's low as all sin, uh, stable baseline. So you know, you're getting the command line printout of each iteration or whatever. And you know, I'm kind of wondering what's happening. And uh, yeah, like literally after one time, I'm like, this is super, super, super slow. Uh, something's got to change. I, I don't know how. I, I heard about Pufferlib, but uh, Joseph was in the same Discord, uh, the uh, uh, Pokey RL Discord, and uh, he someone was like, try Pufferlib. He might have been like, try Pufferlib. So I went, I'm like, okay, great. You know, I'm looking for opportunities to do things because, like, I have no idea what I'm doing. Absolutely. This is before LLMs were that good they they weren't they like they really were not useful so really i was just kind of yoloing it and uh if i really 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 was stuck i'd be asking someone for help but uh i pulled uh pulled buffer lib 
and uh, I think it was a Docker container, pulled it, you know, ran, ran Docker uh, desktop on Windows, went in the puffer tank container, and uh, yeah, ran Pokemon, and wow, that was a game changer. It was so good that like, I found myself, uh, I found myself really re repping it. Fortunately, we had, we had some supervision from uh, a guy named uh, that guy, and he, uh, yeah, he's good. He's good. He's good. And so he, you know, he was able to provide a lot of the, the guidance. And uh, I didn't want to stop with Pufferlib though. The Pokemon was cool, but uh, that's not reinforcement learning, uh, you know, in the purest sense. The purest sense of reinforcement learning really was doing it fast, doing it really fast. Uh, with Pokemon, you're getting pixels, pixels and state data, but you really can't escape the pixels and the Game Boy emulation layer. And so, yeah, those are just slow. And, and it's basically very, there might be ways to speed them up somewhat, but it's not going to be a thousand times faster, probably. Looking for that speed, looking for something that I could also run, you know, with, reasonably without, uh, without compute. And uh, yeah, along comes Puffer Ocean. Now, Ocean wasn't initially a, uh, a suite of, of, of first party EMVs. Uh, in reinforcement learning environments, it was a sort of test suite that that one could could run, and uh, this was very cool. It was just a, a set of a couple, you know, a couple little tests that that each tested for something different. So you could kind of see if if your RL can do these things, or if your network can do these things, and that kind of grew into a, a full fledged suite of environments. Uh, I've contributed a couple environments to Pufferlib. GameRL is really nice because you can immediately see what's going on. There isn't much hidden. You can see what's happening and you know, intuitively, you know what's what's good and what's not. So it, that, makes, that makes it very easy to design and to engineer re uh, reinforcement learning environments. So uh, yeah, I contributed um, Enduro, the uh, the Atari, the classic Atari game, Enduro. That was a, a project Joseph gave me. It was a very hard project because, you know, Enduro's like, there isn't like a decomposition there. There is the, you know, you can get the, the cartridge available, like like the assembly from the cartridge, but it's all one file. It's, it's like insane. It's like, it's like just one giant thing. It's very, you know, very hard to make head or tail of it, to be honest. Uh, really impressive. Only four kilobytes, by the way. Really great game. And uh, so, yeah, I ported that to C, basically. Ported it to C and and, and then hooked it up to integrate it with Pufferlib so that we could do reinforcement learning on it. Very easy to see if it's, you know, working. My goal was make a superhuman agent, basically a superhuman race car driver. Uh, and yeah, it definitely does drive at a superhuman level, so... Pleased with that, uh, and you know the, the graphics are like basically identical to the original, which is crucial. But but it runs, you know, thousands of times faster than the than emulating and and doing reinforcement learning on the uh, emulated version. Like for somebody that started programming stuff not that long ago, it's seriously, honestly, pretty impressive that you're even like trying these projects out. Most people are like doing the easy one project that you have 150 different tutorial of it. And then they still have to push them to, to, to get it to, uh, to completion. But like you, you're fucking <laughs> creating RL environment on <laughs> reverse engineering the. Yeah, <laughs> yeah so that was kind of is... my bad. I, I gave him a project that I thought was going to be like maybe four or 500 lines and it ended up not being that at all. But he did actually get it to work, and Jeez. the code did get shorter over time as well. And so that I was yeah. not that that far off by the end of it, but it took a lot. <laughs> and that's it for today, folks. You should go follow Dan Advantage on X. I'll put his link in the description. He posts a lot of motivating behind the scene content about his environment building journey. And absolutely go check out Pufflelib on GitHub. It's a pretty cool R library and the community is incredibly open to helping new contributors. So have a fantastic day, everyone, and I'll see you in the next one.